Look at that 17th verse just a moment. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. And when he came to himself, Reach over and shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, neighbor. Tell, the devil, tell the devil, I change my mind. My brothers and sisters, what a joy and what a blessing it is to share the word of the Lord with you today. I am so honored to be in your home and to be a part of your life and that God has allowed me to share his word with you. We're showing some TDJ classics, some of those messages that are timeless and I believe have revelation in them that you yet can benefit from. This one I'm excited about. Tell the devil I change my mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you change your mind, can change your outcome. Take a look at this. We've got a father in the text who has two sons. The only other character that's mentioned in the text is a nameless citizen of a far country that the younger son attaches himself to in the time of adversity. So we have in this text four expressed characters and one implied character. His name is never mentioned and there is no particular reference made to him, but there is a character that is implied in the passage that we must talk about and that is Satan. He always drapes himself and hides himself and he generally doesn't come to the forefront because his strength is in, is in anonymity. As long as he can be invisible, he does his best works in the shadows. And though he is not expressed, he is implied in the text before us. We have here a, a certain man, could be any man who has two sons and the younger of the two sons has said to his father give unto me the portion of goods that falleth to me now because he has asked his father for substance or wealth or inheritance we have presumptuously assumed that he asked his father that because he was greedy I want to deal with that erroneous concept. This young man was not greedy. He was not, a, it is not a rags to riches story. He is not somebody who came from the wrong side of the tracks and was looking for an easy break to move to the east side. No, no, no. He was a young man who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He didn't come to his father and ask him for money so that he could change his standard of living. He was born into money. Asking his father for the money would have never made him any richer than he already was. He already had servants. He already lived in a palace. He already had people waiting on him and taking care of him and running bath water and wiping his mouth and hanging his clothes and taking care of him. He had it going on. But the problem was he wasn't satisfied to have the benefits of the house. He wanted control of the house. We are not looking at greed or a lust for money we are looking at a lust for power he wants to be in control of his future he says father it's not enough that I'm living the blessing I want you to give it to me so I can do what I want to do when I want to do it how I want to do it now notice just a detail or two it was the younger son that came to the father and said, give me the portion of goods that falleth unto me. But the Bible says he divided unto them his living. So even though the younger son made the request, because of his request, the father divided unto them, meaning both sons, his living. But incidentally, it would help you to understand that the younger son got a blessing and the elder son got the blessing. But isn't it funny how some folks, when they get blessed, will change? 
Some people can receive a blessing uh, from the Lord and come up in their uh, standards and be able to uh, get authority and power and still maintain their focus. Other people, the moment they get two nickels and a dime, they start acting like strangers you never knew before. They just cannot handle the blessing of the Lord. One good blessing and they can't speak to anybody. And one good blessing and they're shaking your hand with three fingers out. You know what I'm talking about? One good blessing. Just, just, just to finally get a dress that wasn't $69.99 and now you can't speak to anybody when you come in the house of the Lord. But this, 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 this younger brother exemplifies this situation because he got the blessing and he stayed in the house for a while, but it wasn't too long before he became restless in the house. Now there is a doctrine that I want to touch on before I really jump down into this text. It is implied, it is the doctrine of Balaam that is mentioned in the book of Revelations. The Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam a doctrine that God hates. And I want to acquaint you with the doctrine of Balaam because it is subtly at work in my text. Now if you follow me, I'm going somewhere. The doctrine of Balaam is preempted on a concept that says that Satan does not have a witch or a warlock or a root worker or a dust thrower that can curse what God has blessed. That Balaam has employed Balak to, to work a curse on the nation of Israel and this experienced, this experienced sorcerer could not find in his book of recipes a spell or a hex, a root or some dust he could throw, an incantation or a maneuver that could curse what God had blessed. Hear me today, if you are blessed, you don't have to live in fear of being cursed because hell cannot curse what God has blessed. Look at somebody right in the eye and tell them, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. See, sometimes we're too timid about letting people know that we're blessed. We try to act kind of pitiful so that we can get along with people. But from time to time, you need to let them know, I'm blessed. There's power in being blessed. Say amen, somebody. Amen. When you understand what blessed is, now you're not blessed because of what you wore to church or because of the house you live in or because of the kind of shoes or how much money you have in CDs or annuities or, or anything like that. You're not blessed because of the house or the car or the shoe, the husband or children or wife or anything like that. that that's not really what I'm talking about. Those, those are the symptoms of being blessed, but that's not the root of being blessed. Because the real truth of the matter is you can be broke, busted, and disgusted and still be blessed. You can have to catch the bus and wear your sister's shoes and your mama's hat and your Aunt Lucy's pocketbook and come in with an empty pocketbook with newspaper down in it and still be blessed. <laughs> For a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things which he possesses. Bless goes far deeper than anything that a CPA could uh, account for or that you can get interest on in a bank account or that you can hang in a closet or send to a cleaners or have a mechanic work on. Blessed is deeper than that. Blessed isn't even visible or tangible. It is an invisible state of being where the favor of God is upon your life. And hell has a tough time trying to do something with you when you're blessed. Now there are many definitions uh, for blessed. And one of the many definitions that are given for blessed is happy. 
and happy is okay but it is a little weak of a definition for being blessed because happy comes from the Latin word hap where we say happen which means something has to happen in order for you to be happy but you can be blessed when nothing is happening you can be blessed in a cold dark dormant moment of your life and know sit like a lady sitting at the bus stop waiting on the bus to come and know that in spite of the fact that it hasn't happened yet that if you just wait a little while longer that the blessing of the Lord will run out and overtake you and you don't have to do nothing but sit there and pat your foot and know that the blessing is on his way. See, I'm blessed. And it doesn't matter whether it's winter, spring, summer, or fall, whether it's midnight or morning. I might have to weep all night, but don't worry about me. Let me cry because joy is coming in the morning simply because I am blessed. And the devil is limited in being able to do anything to somebody who's blessed because he can't stir up or mix or conjure anything that can curse you when you're blessed. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm tired of asking Webster and when Vines and, and the Strong's Exhaustive and everybody what blessed is. I said, if anybody knows what blessed is, let me ask you. And so I asked him, and this is what he told me. He said, to be blessed is the uncanny, innate ability to succeed over adversity. Still to come on The Potter's Touch. If you feel like nobody appreciates you, stay in the house. If you feel food wounded and discouraged, stay in the house. Broke, busted, and disgusted, but I'm going to stay in the house. Going through hell and high water, but I'm going to stay, 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 stay in the house. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not flee. Touch somebody and say, stay in the house. What arose in America as the biggest event of its kind is back. And now the stage is set. You have never seen a meeting like this. Together again at MegaFest 2013. We're taking over Dallas. You're going to catch abundance. You're going to catch God's blessing. Encouraging women. Peacemaker is somebody who declares war on anything that disturbs their peace. There is a principle that will cause a shift in your situation. If he can deliver me, he can deliver you. Equipping men. We have more fear in running out than we do faith in running over. Everyone got to trade. Claim dominion over it and take it back from the kingdom. This is going to be big. Elevate it to walk in that destination. Meet us in Dallas, Texas, August 29th through 31st. Register at mega-fest.com or call 1-800-BISHOP-2 today. We do it big in Texas. To be blessed is the uncanny, innate ability to succeed over adversity. I said, well, if it's the uncanny, innate ability to succeed over adversity, that means that I can be blessed and still have adversity. Amen. He said, it's adversity that lets you know that you're blessed. <laughs> Yeah, because see, if, if you weren't going anywhere, the devil wouldn't be trying to fight you, you see. And then, then you can tell when a person's blessed, not because they don't go through anything, but when you're blessed, when it's all over some kind of way, you always come out of it. You might have dirt up under your fingernails, you might have scuffed your knee or skinned your leg, but when it's all over, you'll always come out because you're blessed. Touch somebody and tell them, I am blessed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been through hell and high water, but I'm blessed. If you are blessed, the Lord says, no weapon. No weapon formed or mixed or conjured or stirred or fried or baked or boiled. No weapon formed. That means you can get a piece of my hair, but it ain't gonna work. You can get a piece of my clothes, but it ain't gonna work. You can get my picture and burn wax on it, but it's not gonna work. I'm blessed! Somebody's going through a bit of trouble right now, but I came to tell you it ain't gonna work. 
The enemy's trying to set you up, but it ain't gonna work. <laughs> High five somebody, tell them this ain't gonna work either. Uh, the last one didn't work, and the one before that didn't work, and the test last year didn't work, and the test last month didn't work. This work. Cause I am blessed. Sit down, we, we gotta get to the point. Now, <laughs> Ooh, I feel the anointing in here. This is what you got to understand. The devil knows you're blessed, and he's worried about it. He really wants to mess you up. But in order to really do what he wants to do, he's got to get you out of the blessed place. He has got to do something to get you out of the house. When you start talking about staying in the blessed place, you're staying in the place of covenant. You're staying in the place where the riches and the promises of God are coming to pass in your life. There are three uh, blessed places that I want you to hold on to and don't let nobody move you out of it. I want you to stay in the blessed place of the sanctity of marriage. If you are married, stay, invest your anointing into the covenant of marriage. Your marriage does matter. It does matter how you relate to your spouse because it is a covenant, it is a contract, and it is a shelter for you. It's a shelter for your passions. It's a shelter for your needs. It's a shelter for your personality. It's a shelter for your dysfunctions. It is what God has given to you when he saw that it was not good for you to be alone. Don't disagree with his gift. If it's not operating correctly, read the manual. Somebody say, yes, Lord. The next blessed place I want you to hold on to is the blessed place of ministry. Don't give up the ministry God puts you in. Come hell or high water, stay in the house. People who don't stay in the house don't do well. Because when God gets ready to speak a word of deliverance, if you're not in the house, you can't hear it. Somebody who really needs to hear this message this morning didn't come. And no matter how much you tell them what it was like, they will miss some of the electricity of the touch of God because you have to be there to get the full effect. When the hammer falls, you got to be up under it for it to... Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying to you then you've got to stay in a blessed state of having a mission that's your purpose that's your goal you've got to have something that you focused on that you don't move away from because the enemy will try to move you he'll try to move you away from your marriage he'll try to move you away from your ministry and he'll try to move you away from your mission and so we've got to get into the B clause of the doctrine of Balaam because the doctrine of Balaam simply stated says this when that old hex thrower couldn't curse Israel he said I can't curse them because they're too blessed but if I can get them to come out of the blessed place I can perhaps get them to curse themselves look at somebody and say don't curse yourself the only thing you have to worry about is cursing yourself. You don't have to waste time going on a witch hunt, chasing down demons. You don't have to chase down rumors. You don't have to chase down gossip. You don't have to change anybody's mind about you. You don't have to change their attitude. Your blessing is not predicated upon anybody else's opinion. Your blessing is not being held up over who doesn't like you or who doesn't believe in you or who's not with you or who doesn't want you to get the promotion on your job or who doesn't want you to get the loan when God gets ready to bless you he'll make your enemy bless you he'll 
to make somebody who hates you bless you. When God gets ready to open up a door, he'll prepare a table before you right in the presence of your enemies. The only thing you have to worry about is not cursing yourself. The enemy knew that the only way he could get his hands on the prodigal son was to get him out of the house. And so he sent a restless spirit. Somebody say a restless spirit. You have never seen so many restless spirits as we're seeing in the church today. Restless spirits. Folk don't know what to do. They're not happy at home. They want to hurry up and get dressed so they can go to church. Soon as they get to church and sit down, they get restless in church so they can get up and go back home. They hurry it out from home to get to church. Then get to church and hurry out of church so you can get back home and sit down in your chair instead of our chair. Just a restless spirit folks who are real thin are restless eating and drinking weight on and going to nutri systems and trying to find something that they can take to put weight on folks who are overweight restless wishing they were thin the fat folk want to be thin the thin folk want to be fat the young folks are acting grown they're trying to act old and the old folks is wearing short dresses and trying to act young folks who got long hair are cutting their hair off and folks who don't have no hair are gluing I mean, I mean, and folks who don't have a job are giving up a job folks who don't have a job are trying to get a job it's a restless spirit folks who are married trying to get rid of their husband they sick of him they want to be single single folks waiting at the door saying throw him over here baby I want him folks going through all kinds of changes it's a restless spirit when a runaway spirit gets down in you, you aren't happy anywhere. You move on this side and you want to be over there. You move over there and you want to be over here. Satan will send a runaway spirit into your life. He'll try to make you run away from your ministry. He'll try to make you run away from your marriage. He'll try to make you run away from your mission because he knows that if you stay in the house, he can't stir up anything. He can't mix up anything. He can't conjure up anything to kill you he's after you he wants you he's been looking at you and longing for you but he can't reach you because you're too blessed the Lord sent me all the way from the clay hills of West Virginia to get an urgent message to somebody who's in a faith fight the Lord told me to tell you stay in the house I don't care what comes or goes stay in the house even if you got tears in your eye stay in the house if you feel like nobody appreciates you stay in the house if you will fool wounded and discouraged stay in the house broke busted and disgusted but I'm gonna stay in the house going through hell and high water but I'm gonna stay 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 in the house they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up a wings like you run and not be weary walk and not free Can somebody say stay in the house The only thing wrong with this prodigal son is that he left the house. And the enemy says, come on. I can't get you in the house. Come on. Come on out of the blessed place. Come on out in the yard. Come on out and play. Come on out and play. Somebody in here has gone outside to play. Come on. I want you, I want you, but I can't, I can't reach you, I really can't quite reach you, I tried to destroy your child, but I couldn't quite reach you, that's why the car wreck could, didn't kill you, because I couldn't reach you, when you went in the hospital last year, I was trying to get you, but I couldn't quite reach you, I've been trying to drive you crazy, I've been trying to drive you over the edge, I wanted you to have a nervous breakdown but I can't reach you I can't reach you come a little closer come on a little closer come on a little closer come on a little closer I want you where I can get my hands on you and so he sent a restless spirit and the prodigal son began to come just a little bit closer out of his house and when he came out of his house see there's a the time once you've been blessed you can be blessed a while and be wrong 
So I know some of y'all ought to say amen. amen. Out of the wheel and out of the way and still blessed. And so he had his stuff with him and he was out there carrying on and still living. Say, I got the best of both worlds. I'm doing my thing and I still got the blessings of the Father and I'm going on. And he had his stuff, you know. And the Bible said that if you stay out there long enough, you're going to start spinning your substance in riotous living. And I'm so glad that it said substance and not money. Because if it had just said money, you'd have thought that the only thing you lose when you play with the enemy is money. But let me tell you the real deal. When you start fooling around with the enemy, you lose more than finances. You lose your integrity. You lose your self-esteem. You lose your dignity. You lose your self-respect. You you lose your stuff. Look at somebody and tell them, hold on to your stuff. Yeah, hold on to your stuff. Your determination, what the Jews call hispa, your staying power, your guts, your tenacity, your ability to take a licking and keep on ticking, your survival instincts, your overcoming instincts. Touch somebody and tell them, don't lose your stuff. Right back for more after this. Move beyond a fence so the door to total freedom can be thrown wide open. You don't think you have forgiven until your emotions let go. But that means that your emotions are running you and you are not running it. It's forgiveness on a whole new level. The reason you are not happy is that your mind is filled with all that clutter and it's building up in you and you have no peace. We all have pain. Will you mask it or advance beyond it? For helping us reach others with your best gift, you will receive Finding Freedom, a two-DVD message series. Just write us, visit our website, or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. Water has to be in you before it can come out. Do not know that you have peace on the inside before you have peace on the outside. And when your gift is $125 or more, you will also be sent T.D. Jakes Classics Volume 6 on DVD and Woman Thou Art Loosed Worship on CD. It's coming. We are going to turn Dallas inside out. The biggest family-friendly festival is back together again at MegaFest 2013. Inspiration. Thousands will be transformed. Family. Three event-packed days for the whole family. Music. The nation's top billboard artists will be in Dallas all in one weekend. Empowerment seminars and sessions for all ages. Entertainment, McDonald's, Inspiration, Celebration, Gospel Dallas, Tour, Texas. Just Church and Comedy Show, Women of Purpose Concert, Ball Up Championship Game, and more. It's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited about it. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. If you haven't registered, you better get on it. Meet us in Dallas, Texas, August 29th through 31st. Register at mega-fest.com or call 1-800-BISHOP-2 today. We do it big in Texas. We're out of time. We've got to stop there. It's been a real joy to share the word of the Lord with you. I pray that God would strengthen you in ways beyond human comprehension. I cannot articulate the demography of all that you need God to do for you. I do not understand the topography of your situation, but I do know a God who sits high and looks low, has all power in his hand, and he can take a panoramic view of your situation and affix his power to your purpose and bring it to pass for his glory. He's got a plan for you, and I'm excited about it, and you will not want to miss it. May God bless you and strengthen till we are together again. <laughs>